even even Bon B, like after that happened, did he reach out to you and y'all y'all did some more music together? Yeah. And when y'all did, what music was it and how was it the first time y'all came together to do that music yeah. after Pimp was gone? How tough was that? This nigga did all he could do to keep me in school. And while he was there, I was all right. It was tough. I think uh I think we were both like really, really waiting to do it. I can't remember who called who first. I, I want to say I reached out to him first and told him I wanted wanted to uh, start on an album. I, I think that's how I can't actually remember, but uh, we started working on Trill OG. Judge. Yeah, yeah, I'm back, baby, and better than I ever was. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see me. And it would just pop out of him, man. And now all of them just sound brilliant. Everybody know? say that he would have been, they would have been millionaires, Bobo included. Oh. If they would have, if, if he had things set up for them, if he had just lived another 30 days, things was going to be, you know, so much this or that. Like, w were there any things planned with you and him? Or did y'all talk when he had came, you know, during that time? Yeah, like when he was locked up, we were supposed to um, start the 808 Boys. It was a okay. production team with, with he and I. And, uh, I mean, that never really came into, well, it did, but I ended up not being a part of it. Mm. Uh, but uh, Why? Just like after he passed, um, it was just a lot of stuff. So the 808 Boys didn't become a thing until after he had passed? Right, uh, okay. but it was two other producers that did it instead. Because first it started out as me and Pimp, and then uh, he will bring he was bringing some other guys into the fold, and then uh, it just uh, as time went on, uh, we never really just did get it together. But was it because you basically kind of stepped back, as Bun B said when he was on uh, um, he was on Beehive when he said that. You kind of, you know, like it wasn't fun no more. Like, what yeah. did you just kind of? Was it because you didn't pursue it and you didn't really have the drive to keep going with it like that after Pimp passed? Yeah, well, when it came to stuff that he he had created or uh, ideas that he conceptualized, I just didn't feel like it was it was my right to try to claim it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to be just like another one of those people that's grabbing at the opportunity now that he's gone because it was some of that going on but you know what i'm saying so i just didn't i get what you what you're saying but i also look at it from a perspective of keeping his legacy alive yeah you see what i'm saying it's yeah. a real thin line where you got to think about it because a lot of times people look at you and say man they're using his name mm -hmm. are they doing this for clout are they doing this to shine but how much of that will will look even if, even if you were doing it to keep his legacy alive, people still gonna talk. Yeah, they're not gonna stop talking no matter what. Yeah, but if you don't do nothing, do you think Pimp C would be proud that you don't do nothing? Well, I didn't sit back and do nothing. I no, just, but I'm saying what you got to yeah. think about what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I'm not trying. Would he be? Would he want you to carry on and carry? Because he didn't teach you or show you these things, and y'all didn't work together those times, and y'all didn't put on no, those long hours in, like I told Bobo for nothing. Yeah, yeah, he would want to see y'all out here doing what he loved doing. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So I know you kept, you definitely wasn't going to just not do the music. Right. But a lot of times when you see people out here cloud chasing, it can be confusing, right? But we also know that we got to keep that PMC legacy going. <laughs> so it's like we can't worry about what everybody, I don't care what them dudes do. Because yeah. they didn't really have a relationship with him a lot of times anyway. Like you did. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, but like he had different relationships with people, different that, I, people I right. that I didn't really know about. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. whenever he would holler at me, he just holler at me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I didn't. He knew a lot of people, you know, and he was doing a lot of things with a lot of people. So uh, I didn't know like the ins and outs of all of, you know, all I knew was, was is what he told me. You know what I'm saying? What he was going to do and what he was wanting to do. And I'm I'm pretty much like, hey man, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'm here. And like after he passed, man, it just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, 
just wasn't the same without him, bro. Mr. Lee said that. Mr. Lee yeah, said just he wasn't the same. It didn't. I didn't really have like a strong desire to to, um, I guess, uh, like any ideas that he had made. Just to, I don't know, man. It was. It's just. It just wasn't the same. It's, it wasn't it, the same. It, it's like how, how can you start a, a production company with the guy who's the main guy? But the guy's not like there anymore. It's not like I didn't feel like I couldn't do it by myself. Uh, just wasn't, you know, that had those ideas had him written all over it, and there was no way that I I felt like I could go in and make them shine and thrive the way he was gonna make them shine and thrive. Just just because of the type of person he was, you know what I'm saying? And uh, his ideas were great, but they came out of his head, you know what I'm saying? And they fit him, and they fit everything that he was doing you know what i'm saying and it went right along with him but with him gone it's kind of like uh you ever see on on when they do those horror movies or like special effects on tv you got a somebody in a suit standing up and then the body leaves a suit and yeah. the suit just yeah suit yeah just it's not the, the same it, it just wasn't the same bro. yeah you know? I, I look at it like 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 i said when i when i look at a lot of different things that happen even even Bun B, like after that happened, did he reach out to you and y'all y'all did some more music together? Yeah. And when y'all did, what music was it and how was it the first time y'all came together to do that music yeah. after Pimp was gone? How tough was that? This nigga did all he could do to keep me in school. And while he was there, I was all right. It was tough. I think uh I think we were both like really, really waiting to do it. I can't remember who called who first. I, I want to say I reached out to him first and told him I wanted wanted to uh, start on an album. I, I think that's how I can't actually remember, but uh, we started working on Trill OG. Yeah, I'm back, baby, better than I ever was. I started sending him tracks for that. And... Uh, I think he's, I don't, we never really talked about it, but I, I think he was really just didn't have the desire at that particular moment in time. So but I think when he started thinking about the whole Trill OG thing, he was like, okay, he's ready to get back in it. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of gave y'all a place of bridging the fact of, so when y'all did that, was that the first project after Pimp had passed that, 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 that Bumby had done or had he done other projects? I think did he do one after no I, that may have been the first one that he did after after pimp I know it's been a while yeah but I mean he's had he's had successful albums even before that you of know course what I'm saying? Uh, but I think that might have been the first one that he did after after pimp passed and and when 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 you guys done y'all's uh the trilogy uh project together um it had to be different. It was totally different than working with him ever that you had ever worked with him before with Pimp being gone. Yeah, because see, I hadn't, I didn't get the opportunity to work with him on his other albums before that. Yeah. Uh, so we hadn't worked together at that point. Uh, but the way that Trill OG came together, man, it was just like, it felt like making an album. Yeah. And I, I'd always wanted that feeling as a producer. Yeah, how, how many songs exactly you did the whole thing? Felt, huh? How many songs did you do on nine? All of them. Well, well it no, was more. No, it was yeah, more yeah, on yeah, way more. Yeah, yeah, way more. I ended up doing like the majority of them, uh, but uh, I think sonically, man, to me that's that's one of my favorite albums from him. Not not saying that because I worked because there's a lot of other producers on it. It's just the way that it came together, and if it, it kind of put me in the mind state of how. Not that I was there, but how Snoop and Dre worked on the Chronic. Yeah, you know, how, it felt like making an album. Felt good. Yeah, it, it it was like that feeling I had always wanted as a producer. How long? You know? How long did it take y'all to do the project? Just uh, how did y'all send the tracks? Was it a thing where y'all just sending them? Uh, you was it? Was it? We had a point of emailing them or sending them? Yeah, emailing was uh, capable. You could send uh, stuff email back then, but like. What I did, I went to Houston and stayed there for a little while. Locked in with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, locked in. And uh, uh, it actually uh, got me a place out there 
where I could stay. And then after I was there a little while, I went and stayed with some uh, with some relatives because I got a lot of people out in Houston. So during that whole time, we was working on the album. I think it took maybe, I want to say about seven, eight months, something like that. Wow. It took a while. It yeah. took a while. Because they went out, you know, they got, you know, a lot of, a lot of great features. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of great tracks uh, from a lot of other producers, like Justice League. They had some, some heat on there. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Big E. Big E had some stuff on there. Big E Beats. Yeah, he yeah. was over here. Shout yeah. out to Big E Beats. Yeah, Big E. What's happening? What? Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you. Okay. So, at, what do you remember on that Trill OG that he said to you that, that something that sticks out in that moment of time? As far as like in a conversation, yeah, in a conversation or something that 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 sticks out. I can't really think of one thing, and I it it was like like after like after we finished the album, we had like you know a whole uh, uh, album release thing at the really? studio. Yeah, got to see a lot of people, a lot of people that I grew up listening to, you know. So it was it was it was, it was great. big. And we had the opportunity to take it to uh, Atlanta, take it to the studio, and play it for a lot of. A lot of uh, rappers out there, so it was it was a great time. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E Heat, a reason you see.